It's your boy, a typical security guard. I am driving to work this morning. Uh, you might be able to see me a little bit more than normally because the sun's starting to come up. Um, real quick, I want to do a video about the drawback of liberal policies here in Portland and how that leads to a lot of death and destruction. The title says, Go Woke, Get Stabbed. And that's not, no pun intended, a jab at you know, political conversations. It's actually uh, kind of the point of what I'm talking about this morning. Last night, another person was stabbed on the MAX train. Now, the MAX train is like our version of an above ground subway. And uh, I have not read the entire story, but this is something that happens way more frequently than it should. Um, I would say within like maybe the last six months there's been maybe three or four deadly stabbings <clears throat> now if you were to take that and juxtapose that with with three or four shootings the people in this city in management and leadership and prominent positions would be making an absolute grandstand out of that for gun control for you know further uh restrictions of our rights of our abilities but the fact that people are routinely slashed and stabbed in Portland doesn't seem to get the attention of the people that are constantly calling for different regulations and things like that. This just kind of highlights the, the theory behind a lot of the liberal policies of Portland. A lot of the problems that you see here can be traced back to what I would say are well-intentioned ideas, but liberal policies never take into effect how it's going to play out long term, how people are going to pay for it, what's going to be the unintended consequences. We have a, a system here of recycling. I live in the Pacific Northwest, Portland, Oregon. A lot of people really big on recycling. I, I'm, I've been very honest that like I have never been the kind of person that really gave a shit about recycling. I'm not one of those people that's like a, a bleeding heart. Uh, gotta save the planet kind of guy but because so many people have that viewpoint here which is noble I can respect that the thought process is like look if we have homeless people that need money because they're homeless they need to be able to eat things like that and we want to make sure that we save the environment and we push recycling then what we're going to do is have this program where we mandate that there be X number of recycling centers all throughout the city, right? So based on this policy, there has to be places that take recyclables. Now, in a vacuum, that makes perfect sense, but what does that do? That creates a situation where if now people have access to, to drugs, right? Unabated access to drugs because of other liberal policies, now you're just creating a revenue stream for people to be able to pay for those drugs. So because of this bottle drop situation, convenience stores, grocery stores, gas stations, the main recycling centers, they are just inundated with homeless people that are looking to score this small amount of money to be able to purchase the drugs. And then the unintended consequences of that are you have homeless people that steal packages of water, like cases of water or cases of soda. And the entire purpose of stealing it is simply just to go outside, empty it, and then by law, like take this into account, right? I, I, I could literally talk about this for hours. Take this into account. Because of the policy of the bottle drop situation, and then because of the soft on crime policies that we have in general and then on top of that the hands-off approach that most retailers take to theft or crime people knowingly can go into any area steal cases of water steal cases of soda walk right out of the location empty it out right there on the sidewalk off property right and then walk right back in resell those cans and bottles for the small amount of money that they're able to get and then go purchase drugs. 
That is a legitimate system and way of doing things in this city. Everybody knows it. Everybody sees it. Everybody suffers from it. Everybody suffers from the unintended consequences of crime, you know, increased drug usage, all of the the normal people that come in contact with the people that are coming in to do that. You would think in any rational area, right? Just just take what I've told you. That is a small snapshot of how things operate here in Oregon, in Portland rather. You would think that if I told you that as some sort of civic leader or legislator, they make laws about everything else. They're constantly trying to come up with ways. And I hate to continually harp on this and bash on this topic. They continually find ways to advocate for, to create think tanks, to create nonprofits, to create all of this fanfare around gun control. Every other week, there's a different organization that's popping up and a different, you know, tough on gun control conversation that's being had on the news. I just saw the district attorney put out like his his platform for re-election. Number two on his list, tackling gun violence, right? But this very clear issue that I brought up with the bottle drop, you would think that they would go, hey, if that's what people are doing and that's what's happening, we're going to stop that. There's been no effort to change that, no effort to curb that. So convenience stores, gas stations, grocery stores are left with everything that comes with having a hub where, you know, if you have water bottles or you have soda cans, like you're going to be a target. It's literally like creating a, a target for, for homeless people that have drug addiction. And that's just one simple situation. Another thing is that here in Portland, people have become identified with wearing a goddamn mask the covid mask i'm sure by just saying that word that like my stream like my streams don't they don't get very many views anyway but because so many people here identify as far left liberals and have some sort of identity around wearing this damn mask retail establishments refuse to make any sort of ordinances or any sort of rules or any sort of like edict on doing business without having this damn mask on. We have normalized people walking around in a mask. So since that's the case and like no one wants to upset the apple cart here, we literally on a daily basis have nefarious people walking into retail establishments, banks, anything and everything dressed up like the goddamn Lone Ranger. Like a full on ski mask is normal for people to be wearing. Now, as a security guard, like you, you, you're, you're putting yourself as a security guard. That is such a dangerous situation to be in. People who clearly have access to drugs who clearly have access to knives. You guys have seen the pictures of the machetes, the axes, the hatchets. Like, that's another thing. A, a place that has rampant stabbings. <laughs> oh, my God. A place that has rampant stabbings has not addressed the open carry of knives, daggers, dirks. There's no length restriction on knives. There's no issues about carrying weapons at all as long as it's not a gun, right? And we have coupled that with complete access to drugs with a well-documented and known system of scamming the taxpayers to be able to pay for the drugs. And then on top of that, we've coupled that with the ability for people to completely roam around in retail establishments wearing a ski mask or a bandana on their face or any combination of face covering. And all of this ties back to the liberal ideology of 
you know, these people are just like downtrodden. These people are just, you know, they're just, they're, they're suffering with a disease. They treat homelessness here in Portland like it's a disease. Like someone came down with homelessness. Someone caught homelessness. Like there's no action reaction attached to it. They literally look at it like it's a like it's a disease. Like, oh my god, like did you guys did y'all hear about Steve? Like, no, what? What's going on? Dude. He came down with homeless. What? Yeah. My God, I, I saw him last week. He seemed fine. Yeah, man, shit. I mean, was he has he been feeling bad? And so since that's the idea around it, like there's no limit to the lunacy and really will address anything guys they just passed a law to where you have to have an electric leaf blower and like they literally passed a law that outlawed gas powered leaf blowers didn't want to attack any of the drug issues or psychotic people stabbing people like that was was a bridge too far they attacked the issue of gas powered leaf blowers I, this just doesn't seem like reality like i can't sometimes i i really i wonder if like like if you like those there's there's those movies where like the person is walking through life and like things don't seem right. And then you find out like they actually have been dead for like years or whatever, like the sixth sense. Sometimes I wonder if I'm literally living in the sixth sense. None of this makes sense. Like what people focus on here in terms of addressing issues is the most random stuff. And it has to be by design. It has to be. There was a, a study that came out this week that said that Portland, Oregon is the second largest city in terms of number of vacant retail properties downtown. Like our business infrastructure of, of, of the downtown area has been decimated. And I think that it's by design. I think that the one thing that they don't create is more property. They don't create more space. And like, if you want to create a situation where you know mass housing and and opportunities to like house a lot of people in a in an urban space you have to you have to open up that space people aren't going to sell multi-million dollar property so if you just let it rot from the inside people will voluntarily leave and that sounds like a conspiracy theory but i saw a, a thing where the mayor of portland actually proposed that we had like multiple walmarts that closed last year <clears throat> and at one of the, the 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 city council meetings or something like that they proposed utilizing some of those spaces as homeless shelters it's like oh wait we have a you know three huge buildings with parking lots and you know access via the highways blah 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 this is a perfect opportunity for us to create homeless housing i'm like that has to be the ultimate goal to just create a problem so big that it pushes your sane, normal, sober people out. And then you can create this environment of like, I don't want to say socialism because that sounds so political. And this isn't about the political aspect of it as much as it is just like the, the nefariousness of it. It's absolutely, it's horrible to think that people who have created businesses and lives people that have families that span generations here, that a system of government would, would work, whether by design or by happenstance, um, to run those people out in favor of what? Even if like what I'm saying is, is, is completely wrong in how I see it, the results are exactly what I'm saying. So like, if that's the result, clearly that's not working, or maybe it is working, you know? But these well-intentioned policies are, they're only creating problems. They're creating problems on a small scale for us in security. 
And um, on a large scale, they're creating problems for the entire city. So, I don't know. I could go on with this all day. Let me see what we got here. Give me one second to just look through this. Do, 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 All right, we're good. All right, guys, I'm heading to work. Y'all be safe. Stay frosty.